Now that's an example of what New Zealand used to sound like, and we've got a plan to get it back. Um, my involvement in this project is a little unusual, so there was a little shake about five or six years ago. After that, we had to move house, and I moved into a house that was completely infested with rats and possums. Real estate guy didn't tell me that, but anyway. Um, so we met, we, I just didn't want to live with them, so I completely got rid of them, and over the next couple of years, what we noticed was the bird volume started going up, and I was like, well, that's pretty cool. Um, and then I started digging into this thing. So some of us know a little bit about it, but what kind of shocked me was New Zealand's the second worst place in the world for loss of species. We're worse than any of the places that are still chopping forests down or doing poaching. What horrified me even more was that of the 70% that we've got left, uh, there's, uh, most of them are either extinct or still in decline. So it's not a problem that's actually gone away. So the reason is not that we don't care, it's that we were our own island for 70 million years, and our birds and insects just couldn't cope with these predators. So we have um, something where, basically, if it's a healthy environment, you hear the bird, a cacophony of bird song, and if you don't, it's basically probably a rat-infested dead zone. So an overseas botanist made a really insightful comment. He said, New Zealand looks kind of pretty, but it's kind of like a cathedral without a choir. And New Zealand really is quite different. You could say, well, rats and possums have got the right to be here as well. And well, basically, our 70 million, dollar, uh, 70 million year old uh, ecology is just being eaten. So given that I've got geekish tendencies, um, I wasn't just happy with the idea that, well, we can just, uh, it seems like it's getting better. So I thought, well, let's just have a way that we can at least measure this, because a lot of the places we don't even know if it's getting better or if it's getting worse. So this is just a way that we turned a little smartphone into a device that takes a little sound clip, uploads it to the cloud. And clearly, because it's measuring the cacophony, we can then get a bit of an index. And we obviously decided to call it a cacophonometer. Um, and when we weaponize it, uh, it'll be called a cacophonator. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And then extending on the geekish tendencies, I was like, well, I wonder what else you could do with this digital technology. And as you guys know, if you digitize things, it gets kind of interesting. So we're like, we reckon we can make trapping 80,000 times better, which is kind of crazy, but let me explain. So most traps use food. These animals can only smell three to five meters. They can hear 10 times that. So you can cover 100 times the area if you use a sound lure. Instead of having to replace the food every couple of weeks, you can use solar panels. You can have them out there for a lot longer, 20 times longer. Now, we're looking at cool ways that you can actually use cameras to do identification. So instead of having different traps for different sorts of pests, we can uh, do all pests with one device. And then we've had cameras sitting in front of some of the best traps that are out there, and we're getting catch rates as low as 1%. So we'll get 100 possums walking past traps and only killing them 1% of the time. So we think we can inc increase the catch rate by 10 times. So that's kind of what we're, we think is kind of interesting. Now, what, I just want to talk a little bit about social lures, because they're a little bit different. So uh, you've got a full belly. What's next on the list? A little bit of social interaction. Um, one of the really interesting things about social lures is that you can get them very targeted, but also the hardest thing is to get rid of the very last pests and or when there's a reinvasion. And when that's the case, food works even worse, because there's lots of other food around. But the desire for a social interaction is, it works even better in theory. Uh, and so one of the reasons I like this is people say, hey, Grant, what are you working on? I'm like, I'm thinking about possum erotica. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so one of the things we have to do if we're going to get rid of everything is we have to identify everything. So at the moment, uh, some of the state-of-the-art tools are little chew cards and tracking tunnels, and we know that a lot of these predators don't even go near them. So there are cameras out there, but they're kind of designed for pigs and deer. So we had to have something that was ultra-sensitive. So what we've got is we've got a little Raspberry Pi. It takes a heat video, and it takes an infrared video, uploads it to the cloud so that we can know exactly what's going on. So it's almost like having a better telescope in terms of looking at what's going on there. Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit and go through all of these videos, but this is something that I don't have to explain, which is kind of cool. But basically, 
uh, artificial intelligence is really good at doing this. So we gave a, a bunch of videos to some folk at University of Canterbury, and they can tell 100% of the difference the time, uh, between rats, stoats, possums, and false positives. So we can have this little device that knows exactly what's going on. And then that takes, just makes everything so much easier. So you can do experiments instead of doing an experiment that typically takes two or three years as you try lots of things, you can try thousands of things and work out exactly what's going on. And you can use the AI for all sorts of things the way that you do your, your sound lures as well. <coughs> now this is just a little bit off topic, but I just want to mention, we talked about the genetic things. Typically, Kiwis say, not so keen on the genetic engineering thing, but there's some really cool stuff happening with CRISPR where there will be the ability to release mice that only have male offspring, propagate through the country, and get rid of the whole lot. And I think we have to look at everything, just because it, you know, it's so, so dire. Now, again, this is something that when I talk, normally I have to explain this, but again, I don't with you guys, so it's kind of cool, because you've got the hang, we digitize it, so all of this stuff that kind of sounds, a couple of years ago would have sounded like sci-fi is now actually getting easier and easier, pretty, pretty better. And then the thing that I've been a little new to is uh, we knew we, you know, we weren't clever enough to do all this ourselves, so we made it all completely open source, non-profit for free. And um, I founded this with Dave Lane, who's an open source guru. And then uh, my son Cameron's actually done a lot of the programming on that, which is kind of cool. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I used to love telling my dad this phrase, which if his son isn't smarter than his father, we'd still be living in caves. Uh, now I've got a son, I know that's true. <laughs> Um, so what's kind of cool about open source is I, we kind of said, hey, here's what we're doing, and then all these people just chip in, and they're like, it kind of makes you feel good about humanity, really. Um, a couple of other people I just want to call out, the folks from CCL that are sponsoring this have just said, yep, we're into this, free data, Spark are giving us free data upload. Um, not only that, they're throwing brains of the uh, organizations in as well, and it's kind of you know, together we'll get, we'll get it. The government announced a few months ago that we want New Zealand to be predator-free by 2050. Uh, it's just a bold, sort of ballsy thing that New Zealand should be doing, really. Um, and it was kind of around the world called the most ambitious conservation project around. It was also got a bit of grief because uh, it was deemed a crazy goal. I think it's crazy as well. Not crazy because it's 2050, but we'll do it way before then. Um, <laughs> 34 years in tech development. <laughs> um, yeah. 34 years in tech development is just unbelievable how much we'll be able to do. So, um, so just imagine for a moment a little device, say the size of my fist, that's sitting out there in the forest and it's pinging little sounds out there and it's waiting for a response and it goes, ah, right, that's a male possum. And I'm in a beach forest and it's autumn after a full moon. The best thing to lure it in is this it lures in identifies it, the most likely way that we're going to kill them is a little device that squirts poison on them, then they go away and lick it off, and you can get just the right dose to get rid of them, and not enough for secondary poisoning. Um, and then it goes back into listening mode. And then as soon as anyone works out a slightly better way to do any of those processes, you can update the whole lot and it can evolve faster. Um, now you can imagine we get these little devices, and New Zealand's a kind of big crazy place. Now imagine you've got drones, and they can just drop these devices in a couple of lines, move them up, and then as soon as it's got rid of the whole lot, they can move them up further. So you can work your way up the country in various areas and potentially get rid of the whole lot. Um, <clears throat> now for the controversial bit. Now the reason I'm doing this is uh, I want to show off some of our cool technology. We've got ultrasonic sensors around the, down the bottom here. This will be fun for you guys, not so fun for the rest of you. <laughs> so we've got nine uh, Norway rats and six large ship rats. Probably, I say probably because sometimes they eat each other. <laughs> um, now the tech guys that are helping me with this have taken note of where the US folks are because I don't want them to have this experience. I want you guys to have it because this is the reality of New Zealand. It's what's, uh, and so it's just a quick little thing. They're all certified disease free. Um, but <laughs> our, our, I don't want our American folk to have it because it's not their problem. And the last week they've had enough trauma, I think. So. Um, so they've made me do this health and safety thing. So if they crawl up you, they can give a little scratch but they've got some uh, antiseptic pads out there. And the unlikely event that you get bitten, uh, 
they have shots and things as well. So you can put your hand up if you don't want the rat experience, and we'll try and guide them away from you. Is it? You don't? You're not keen? <laughs> Who thought it was a good idea to be on the beanbags? <laughs> yeah. I'm not clever enough or mean enough to do that. I just wanted you to visually think about it. Um, but our point is, you don't want a rat experience. Our birds and insects don't either. Let's get rid of them and get our cacophony back.